Now, what I want to go through for this part of the practical is to really help you understand a little bit more about the different colours and how they combine together to give you the display that you see on your screen in terms of the image. So what I've started off with up on the top left hand corner here is just a screen grab of part of the Landsat image in the zoom window. Um, and the crosshair is representing an individual pixel that we're going to be investigating at the moment. Um, now down the bottom we've got a graph which hasn't actually been um, formed yet but this is going to be the basis of our spectral profile graph. On the y-axis you can see that this represents the reflectance values of either low, medium or high and on the x-axis the Landsat spectral bands you've got blue, green, red, near infrared, mid infrared 1 and 2. Now in here this is just showing you how I've created the the image up here in terms of the input bands and how they've been displayed. So the input Landsat bands, blue, green, red, near infrared and the two mid infrared bands only getting displayed through the three different colour guns that we need to use to create all possible um, colours there. So the way we go about trying to determine what's within a pixel and what actually makes makes up that pixel in terms of colour is we just follow a couple of a couple of steps I'm going to go through that through those one by one with you here. So first of all we identify the display pixel colour both in terms of tone and hue. And so I'm going to say that that's dark green. Okay, so dark being the tone, so it's either dark or bright or moderate, um, and green being the hue. Um, the second step is to look at how that display colour is made. Okay, so green is made up really of, of the green colour without any blue or red contribution and the fact that it's dark means that it doesn't actually have a lot of green making up that colour. So what we're going to say here is that there is low red and blue contribution and a medium level of green to give us that colour that we see there. The next step is to note the input band combination and what we've said here is that the red green blue is um, being displayed as Landsat bands 3, 2, 1 Okay, so here's our red, green and blue and Landsat bands 3, 2, 1, so it's a true colour composite. And then next what we do is we look at how the, the colour actually relates to the input band contribution. So what we've got here is where we've said in step 2 that it's low, red and blue, well, that actually means that it's low in bands 3 and 1 and then medium in band 2 for the green band there. The next step is to sketch a spectral profile based on the three bands that we have information for. So we'll just do that in our little graph here and where we've said we've got low values in the blue and the red and a medium value in the green. And the final, the final step that we do is to identify then what that feature might be. So we have, a, have an idea of what type of feature has this part of a spectral profile at least and also use other cues that might help us interpret that. So it's not just a green feature here um, which may indicate that it's some form of vegetation in a, in a standard blue, green and red colour composite um, but it's also near a water body so I'm going to say that it's healthy vegetation um, and in fact may even be some mangroves and I know that also by some contextual information from the larger area. So let's go through another example quite quickly. So this is, this is a pixel that I've picked out here and we go through the exact same process. Um, so we identify the pixel colour and this time we're saying that it's bright white. So the two components there of tone and hue. The next step is to figure out how that display colour is made and from the practical last week you should have observed that white is made out of an equal contribution of both of all three red, green and blue combinations and because it's bright it must have high levels of all three of those. So the input band combination we've got a red, green and blue um, being displayed uh, sorry bands 3 to, three to 1 being displayed as red, green and blue just the same as the previous example and so the band contribution, therefore, would be high in bands 3, 2 and 1. So we sketch the spectral profile. We've got a feature looking like this just at the top of the graph there. Um, and then we need to identify that feature. 
And again, using other cues, not just the spectral information, I know that that's an open area or artificial surface. Now this gets us slightly a little bit more complicated when we start looking at false colour composites. So what we've got here is, is an area that's <clears throat> um, that again we're taking that centre pixel there, but this time we're using a, a standard false colour composite display. So we've got our Landsat spectral bands as input, but our display here being offset being the RGB as near infrared, red and green this time. So again we step through the exact same process. We identify the pixel colour both in terms of tone and hue. And I would say it's a bright red colour. So we figure out how bright red is made and that would mean that it has a high contribution of red and low in the green and low and also in the blue. Then we note the input band combination and this time we're saying the RGB is Landsat bands 4, 3 and 2 or near infrared, red and green as shown up here and the import band contribution therefore would be high in band 4 which is near infrared low in band 3 and low in band 2 relating back to step 2 there we we'll sketch that spectral profile and here's where we have a look we have a look at the graph here saying so high high in the near infrared and then relatively low in the in the red and the green and then we look at identifying that feature based on, again, the spectral information, but perhaps other, other information as well. And here I know that this is healthy vegetation, and healthy vegetation is always displayed as red in a standard false colour composite. So let's just go through one more example of a different band combination as well. This time we're going to use a false natural colour composite. So we're introducing a mid-infrared band, a near-infrared band, and the green being RGB. So first of all, display the, identify the pixel colour. And I would say it's a bright cyan colour. And figure out how cyan is made. Well, cyan's a combination of green and blue. It's relatively bright, so it would be high contribution of those, but a little contribution from red. So the input band combination is RGB. It's 542 in the Landsat combination there, or mid-infrared, near-infrared and green. Band contribution therefore would be low in the mid-infrared, high in the near-infrared and high in green. Sketch that spectral profile and this time we're missing out the red here so there's a bit of a data gap here and we need to identify that feature. <clears throat> and I know that that's turbid water or suspended sediment. Knowing that it's water will have a low reflectance value in the mid infrared. Now, water also usually has a low reflectance value in near infrared, but because it's got a, a high level of suspended sediment, what's actually getting reflected is that sediment as opposed to just the water content there. So that's why we're getting a high level of the near infrared there and high in the green as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit more of an indication on how we actually go through the process of understanding colours and how colours link with band display and should help you interpret some of the features within your image.